This is Dave with Level Up Woodworking, and this is my 2024 shop tour. And this is Mia and her two friends. Okay, this is Dave again. This is the 2024 shop tour. This is my new shop. Not very big, but it's all mine, and I really enjoy it. And I want to give you a tour of all my tools. Now, before I give you a tour of inside the shop, I think I need to take you outside the shop because not everything fits in here. Now, with today's video, I'm offering a free t-shirt to one lucky viewer. All you have to do is put level it up in the comment section of this video. And at the end of August, we'll pick at random one lucky winner. You'll get this shirt just like this, a level up shirt shipped to your door for free in whatever size you want. You can't beat that. Thanks to Desenios, I'm able to do that. And this is the most comfortable t-shirt I have ever owned. I'm sure you'll love it. So don't forget, level it up in the comment section. Well, in the old garage where I used to have all my tools, I have an opening to the new garage, which is now my shop. And in the old garage, because there's not enough space in there, I store all my lumber and all my metal here outside the garage door. And it actually works pretty effectively. Now, this is my third lumber rack, and I'm not sure it's gonna be my last one. I keep building them. Uh, because I change what I end up storing and um, I've got a wide variety of wood here I probably need to go through it and clean it out But uh, it serves a purpose for me and above me is my lumber rack I did a video on that uh, a few months back and uh, I have a French cleat lumber rack Which serves me well and has been very effective. I really enjoyed it now, coming into the shop off to my right here is my assembly table. This is one of the early builds I did when I was in the two-car garage. Served a great purpose because I have this on rollers. I can set it up or lock it in place, move it around. And in a two-car garage that you're sharing with cars, um, you don't have a lot of space. So I could put it up in the front and then pull it out and do work on it. Um, this has a number of functions, has routing capability, has dust collection, has screw storage here, space for router bits, more storage down here, a spot for my uh, uh, table saw crosscut sled, uh, sanding uh, equipment down there, obviously a clamp. And on this side, I used to have the planer. And on that side, I do have a sander. And behind here, I used to have this uh, glue rack. And I took the glue rack off of there and put it up here really because of the placement of the table. This has worked out really well for me. I really enjoyed using this. I will keep this for a long period of time. But some of the things in this table are gonna change long term. Having moved from that two car garage into this shop, and spreading out some of these functions, this function is going to change significantly. On top of this, you see this uh, router sled. This is kind of an interesting design that I bought off a professional woodworker. I'm building a table for this right now, and in the future, I think I'm going to have some interesting videos that will come out using this particular tool. Now let's move on to the sander. Now, at this end of the table, I have my rigid sander. This is a very common sander that a lot of people use. I've really enjoyed this. I put it on a lifting mechanism so I can pick it up. It's a little tilted, but it works well for me. Uh, certainly can attach dust collection, although it looks like I haven't used dust collection much lately. Um, anyway, I've been very happy with this and it's in a good spot. Uh, I'll check and put how much it actually sells for new today in the video with this. Now, if you're interested in plans for this, I do have plans for this table. I think it's a very versatile product. Let me start with the lower rack for small clamps. This is actually the first video that I ever did, and I've modified it for this space. It used to be three layers, now it's just two, and I took the back layer and kind of put it on the side. Holds all my clamps, 
Um, I just don't want to get rid of it because it's the first video I did. So uh, it has a variety of clamps that I've collected over time. I have to say these uh, Harbor Freight 6 inch uh, clamps are pretty good. They're, they, they're like four bucks now. I think I think I paid 250 for them. I use these all the time to hold stuff in place and they have a lifetime guarantee. So, you know, it's, it's a good deal. Um, I really kind of, kind of like those. Now, if I move up a little bit, these are my bigger clamps. They go up to uh, 48 inches. I think, I think that's 48 inches. Anyway, a, a lot of Betsy or a lot of Bessie, thank you, and uh, Jorgensen clamps. I bought all of these on an auction for about $175 for all of this, as well as some of the smaller ones I have. These would be in the range of $500 if you bought them all brand new. They're all in good working order, and I'm very happy with them. Now, next to my clamp rack is my planer, and this is a DeWalt 730. Uh, brand new, these cost about $600. I paid $400 for this. It was very lightly used, and I've had this maybe three years. For dust collection on this, I have a little fitting, a rocker fitting that I got. Um, and I can take this dust collection here for the miter saw and put it on the planer. And it works very effective. I can get dual use out of that. And then when I'm done, I put this back on the, well, if I get it back, put this back on the miter saw. And then I have a little uh, storage clip down here for the uh, extension, because this is a, kind of a tight fit. Uh, there's a drawer front here because I have a, four inch PVC pipe in the back, which is a dust collection for the uh, miter saw. Let me slide that back in. Now, above the planer, I have my drill rack. And let me check and see if you can see that. A lot of people, they have like 10 different drills. I have two. I have a small nail gun. I have two DeWalt drills. These are very effective. I keep a, a drill bit in one and um, in the other one, I have a, a Phillips head uh, driver. So um, I've got my additional batteries here. I've got a battery charger on the side, uh, a dowling jig, and my uh, Craig uh, pocket hole jig. And then up here, I've got a little drawer that I can pull out that I have some bits and everything for the drill. It's small, it's effective, it's all I really need. Now, for this table, I just released a two-part video on this that shows building this whole shelving unit and then doing the dust collection. And I think this is going to be a long-term build for me. It's going to be very effective. I've got storage underneath for some of the small power tools. And I've got a drawer here for some miscellaneous stuff. It's not even full because I don't have enough stuff to put in it yet. But... I will over time. And then I've got my miter saw. And I, I think this, I call this dust containment um, because it does collect dust through the uh, uh, dust collector, but it contains a lot of dust. And I think there's a myth out there that a lot of people think they have dust collection. Uh, with miter saws, it's collection and containment, my opinion. Anyway, I've got these on magnets, so these can come off in case I want to do a, a different 45 cut. Uh, this does have a limited height to it, but I'm okay with that. I built this that way because I wanted to contain this and not have it so big in the shop. And you can see I've got quite a bit of wall space. This is the stop for my miter saw. And I know it, uh, it looks kind of funky, but it works well. And if I take this one piece off, which takes me a minute, I have both pieces on here because I want to be able to make sure it stays straight. But I can flip this around, and then I can bring it all the way up against the saw for shortcuts. So that's why I built this 
kind of uh, long uh, stop here, but I've got some flexibility with it. Now, next to the saw here, I have an open table, and let's make sure you can get a chance to see that. Um, this creates a lot of open table space, and I have this up here right now. I can put actually put that away in the shelving unit down here. And this is a great height to work at. And actually, I've done a, a fair number of drawings and lists and everything here, and I think I'll continue to use that as workspace because it does sit at the right height for me. Um, I may build something out here at some point in the future. I may build something up above it, but at this point, I don't need any of that right now. We'll see what happens over time. I have plenty of storage underneath. This is all for, uh, again, uh, small power tools. Uh, I've got uh, uh, routers, hand routers here. Um, I've got an old uh, sander that I don't even use anymore. Uh, what else do I have in here? I've got a uh, jigsaw and a, another nail gun that I don't use. So I guess there's a, a fair number of things I don't use anymore down here, but I've got room to grow in terms of storage underneath. And then I've got these drawers down here. I've got some stuff in them right now, but I'm going to build these out basically to hold all my screws because when I designed this and built it, I want to pull it out and see everything. And the problem right now with the uh, assembly table, I've got all these bins and I have to pull individual bins out, look, and then put them back, which again was great when I was sharing a two car garage. But now that I've got my own space and room, I can pull this out and uh, look for screws or I can pull this one out and look for screws. This is a uh, Shop Fox drill press with an oscillation unit if you want to do some sanding. I really haven't used the oscillation feature. Uh, I built this cabinet and this table with these wings on it uh, a few years ago. It's been very effective for me. I paid $4.95 for this, which is a little high, but I had looked for this particular drill press for months because it's got great ratings, it's a good drill press, and I found a guy uh, about two hour drive away who had bought it and never used it. Even the, the chuck here, this was all in grease in a, in a box. And so I had to assemble it and uh, clean up the chuck. It works great for me. I do use this quite a bit. I'm very happy with it. I don't think I'll ever sell this drill press. This is a, kind of a long-term keeper for me. I am going to do some upgrades to the table. Everything I'm going to keep. I love the way it is, but I just want to do some upgrades. I want a tool holder here. I pulled one of these off because it interfered and I want to fix some of that. I do have dust collection, but I want to design a piece to hold that so I can use it a little bit more effectively. And uh, do some modifications to the fence that I have that comes up against the back. So a lot of little projects I'm going to do here. This is being an upcoming video here in a few months. Now, behind this, I have my dust collector. This is a Grizzly one and a half horsepower dust collector. I bought this on a deal off of Grizzly for 500 bucks. I think they're selling right now for 625. Let me make sure you can get a good view of this. Now, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Desenos. They're located in the Pacific Northwest. They can solve all your merchandise needs, both commercially and personally, with a wide range of products such as custom tees, hats, stickers, mugs, and a lot more. I've also used them for Little League team t-shirts, running event shirts, and elementary school team spirit wear. Their team also provides logo design and custom imaging delivered in a wide variety of digital formats for easy future production. No job is too big or too small for these guys, and it's been a pleasure for me to work with them and their team to supply all of my needs. I mounted this as high as I possibly could in this small shop because I wanted it up off the floor. And as you can see, I've got all the dust collection pipes that are high up. 
I paid $60 on Craigslist for all of this and more. I couldn't believe the kind of deal I got, but I built all this out with the dust collector. It's got a HEPA filter on it. Um, it works well for me. The bag comes off sometimes, which kind of, it's kind of annoying, but I've been able to manage that. If I have too much airflow that forces the bag off, I have to be careful how much I'm using to make sure that doesn't happen. And I've got this supported by a 55 gallon plastic barrel below this. And you can't see that. It's just sitting there underneath it. But I'm going to build this out where I get rid of the bag, use the barrel, and have a lift mechanism to, to bring it up tight against the filter and then be able to take it out and empty it. And I'm going to put 55 gallon bags in it so I don't have to physically empty it. I can just pull the bag out, put a new bag in, uh, put it back up against the filter, and I'm off and running. Now, I've also got a ladder here, and I don't know if you noticed that when I was talking about the drill press. I've had a problem with the remote on this Grizzly uh, product. The remote failed on me one month after the warranty had expired on this unit, and it's been a, a, a very difficult process to get a new one. Um, I, it was very confusing which particular replacement uh, uh, remote I needed for this device. I finally called Grizzly. The guy found it. He sent it out to me right away. It was the wrong one. It was what they recommended, and it was the wrong one. Called Grizzly back again. Uh, they were nice enough to say, we're going to credit you for that one. Don't even have to return it to, to us, which no good to me anyway. But they ordered the right one, which is on back order and has been on back order for almost six months. So I literally have to climb a ladder to turn this on and off. I have thought about doing a two-stage uh, uh, dust collection system here, and I would be interested in your feedback. I've heard positive and negatives about them, probably more positive than negative, but I might build this into a two-stage system. I might even consider taking a pipe out the back of the garage and putting this whole unit outside of my small shop. So we'll see what happens over time with that, but I think there's changes coming, so stay tuned. Now, moving on from the dust collection is the dust vacuum. And this is a AWD-15 commercial vacuum. It has a floor sweep built into it, and you can get a hooked up hose that you can run a hose for wet, dry, clean up kind of stuff. Um, I bought this on Craigslist for 60 bucks. These things sell for $1,000 new and about $600 refurbished if you have the attached hose and the brush to go with it. I don't have that with this, so it's probably not worth that much. I do use it to vacuum up the shop floor. It takes minutes, works real well, and I'm probably going to keep this in the shop as long as I got room for it. Next to this is my joiner. This is a rigid joiner that I bought for $200 on Craigslist. Totally took the thing apart, rebuilt it, refurbished it, put it back together, and put it on wheels. Uh, it works really well. Uh, I've got new blades in this, and I've got another set of blades and an adjustment tool for it. Been very happy with it, although I think I need the space, so I'm probably going to let this go and use my table saw. Now, I built a jig for the table saw to do joining work. I'm going to build a better one because I wanted to experiment with it. It worked well. So I'm going to build a better one. And when I have that, I think I can let this go. So this is a Grizzly Extreme Series 14-inch, 1 and 3 quarter horsepower bandsaw. I bought this on Facebook off a guy. He had rarely used it, and he was selling it for $1,200. Again, I probably paid a little bit too high, but it was basically brand new. It had hardly been used. Retail today, they're about $1,500 plus shipping and tax. So maybe you're in the range of $2,000, and I pay $1,200. Got a great fence on it. Uh, I've got a couple of blades for this. Um, I got dust collection hooked up to this. I think it works fairly well for dust collection. I've also got it on wheels. Very good success with this. I'm very happy with it, and I think I'll keep this as part of the shop. 
Now let's move on to the, the wall that I have right here. Okay, this is my French cleat wall, and I just released a video the month before this for this wall. And uh, if you haven't seen it in detail, I'd encourage you to go back and take a look. Um, uh, several of these I actually designed out the pieces and there are for sale on my website. I think there's four pieces for three bucks. It's not a big deal, but uh, it certainly helps my, uh, my shop. But uh, there's some of the more unique pieces on the wall. Now, a couple of things I'll point out is this first aid box. Um, it's not just first aid. If I open it up, you'll see that I store almost all of my finishes here, uh, whether it's uh, paint or stain or what have you. Um, obviously, I've got my biscuits. I've got a lot of biscuits and some extra glue. And I do have a first aid kit at the top. Um, I wanted a metal cabinet to house some of these chemicals. And I found a great deal on this, again, on uh, Craigslist. And so uh, it fit right in between these uh, two uh, French cleat walls, and uh, so it worked out really good. Um, I thought about uh, my table saw has got a very big, heavy fence. I thought about hanging that in this space here. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, very happy with how this came out, and again, I've got a little room to grow here, so we'll see what happens. If you want to see this whole build, go back to the last video. It's really easy to find. And I'll actually leave it in the description if you want to click on that and, and go to this. Okay, this is my Harvey Alpha 1 and 3 quarter horsepower table saw. I bought this used for a thousand bucks, again, on Craigslist, uh, off a guy who had it for a while, used it, and basically sold his whole shop. Um, I love this saw, but probably more importantly is I love the service from this company. I missed or didn't have some of the hose collections for the dust collection on this unit, and they were absolutely wonderful in helping me source those, buy them, and get them here. Uh, I think it cost me 20 bucks for all these different parts. Um, it's a great table saw. You can run it off of 110 or 220. I have it running off of 110 right now, and I think it's very effective. I think if you buy these new, they're like $1,850 plus shipping and tax, so you're getting close to $2,500. I spent $1,000 for this. Um, I don't know if I'll ever sell this unless I buy a saw stop. That's probably the only thing that would get me out of this particular table saw. The size is right for this shop. It's got an excellent, excellent fence. And I've got a miter fence on the side here. They do videos about this because these are so nice. This is one of the, the best miter fences, I think, in the industry. And it came with the saw. So this has been great. Underneath the saw, I have my uh, table saw cabinet. Um, I've got a drawer here where I keep some of my push sticks and... Uh, uh, angle gauge and you know a few other jigs um, and, and then underneath that I've got my uh, wax for the table and my uh, uh, again the uh, gripper uh, these things are great by the way uh, I've been very happy with that underneath that I have room for uh, inserts this one was made to go with it so it's a zero clearance I've used tape before on the existing one, so I can go either way. And then this one is made for a dado blade, and uh, that again came with the table saw. And I've got some tools here. Um, underneath that is where I keep all my blades, and I gotta make a couple comments about them. First of all, I've got a Freud 8 inch set of dados, and these are absolutely wonderful. There's a nice little uh, on the inside here, a nice little chart on what you need for different thicknesses. Um, I love this. I use this all the time. And then I bought a couple Freud blades. And I didn't realize what a difference a blade could make for a table saw until I bought these. This is a cabinet maker crosscut. Um, and then I have another one, which is a Freud uh, thin rip 
a glue line rep and I've used this to make uh, cutting boards. Um, just uh, amazing blades. And it's not the fact that they're sharp. It, uh, you just feel like you're buying a quality product and they work really well. Um, I've got a nice little table saw sled uh, for my table saw. And I know I showed you the other one, which is a bigger one. This is a small one. Again, it came with the table saw when I bought it. And then a jig over here, which I won't pull out right now. But it, So, uh, yeah, this is the, the heart of my shop. It's right in the middle of the shop. It fits well. And I've been very happy with it. And again, if, uh, if I buy a saw stop to replace it, that's probably the only thing that will replace this in the future. Hey, this is Dave with Level Up Woodworking. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my small but mighty shop. I really enjoy this space and I got a lot of fun projects coming up right in here to do some upgrades. Maybe you should subscribe to this channel. Yeah, maybe you should. I would certainly appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.